When artist John Singer Sargent was commissioned to paint a series of gods and goddesses at the Museum of Fine Arts, he turned to one man, Thomas McKellar. He was a young, strapping African American model. Little has been known about the pair's relationship until now. The upper reaches of the Museum of Fine Arts Rotunda is where the gods and goddesses live. They stand in radiant glory. They ride chariots and they soar on feathered wings. They are white and idealized, but they are him. The man in these drawings was clearly black, and I thought, what's going on here? Who is this man? Has anyone figured out who he is? These murals and figures have hovered over the MFA for roughly a century, since they were conceived by painter John Singer Sargent in 1916. But it's only now that there's been a comprehensive look at Thomas McKellar, the black model behind the murals. It's all thanks to an accidental discovery at the Isabella Stewart Gardner Museum by collection curator Nathaniel Silver. In 2017, I was in our storage facility looking for another work of art, and I opened the wrong cabinet、um, and happened to find this portfolio. It was huge, and I thought, "What's that?" So I pulled it out and I had a look through it, and I had never seen these Sargent drawings before. That find has led to Boston's Apollo, an exhibition examining the relationship between Sargent and McKellar, who was the painter's principal model for the MFA murals, an artistic relationship lasting eight years. It wasn't that just anyone could have helped Sargent get to this point. It was Thomas McKellar specifically that allowed Sargent to unlock a creative potential that had not been tapped before. Sargent was a celebrity painter and tired of doing the portraiture that was his bread and butter when he received the MFA commission. There are no known pictures of Thomas McKellar, who was a 26-year-old bellman when he met Sargent at Boston's posh Hotel Vendome. He was a veteran, a Roxbury resident. He came from Wilmington, North Carolina, in the 1890s. In the wake of devastating racial violence, so certainly coming to Boston meant the opening up of professional opportunities that he never would have been able to explore in Wilmington. In these charcoal sketches, Sargent ultimately gave to his friend and patron Isabella Stewart Gardner, we find the artist drawing the fine contours and musculature of McKellar, a sometime contortionist turned stand-in for mythological gods. There were specific skills that、uh, a model needed to have. You needed to be able to hold difficult poses for very long periods of time, but you also had to be able to work with somebody who was constantly moving you around. There is little known about the extent of the relationship between the two men, but consider this Sargent painting of McKellar. It's Sargent's only major nude and was hung prominently in his studio. Never intended for public view. Sargent lavished attention in making this work. You can see it in the highlights on the shoulders and on the chest here. This incredible tiny little shadow just over the Adam's apple, and another one just under the bottom lip. This was not a painting that was dashed off in a few strokes. This was a painting that he spent an incredible amount of time, effort, and love in making. The first thing I saw was all the drawings together, and so that impact, that first and initial impact, on my eyes and on my senses, and that got me so excited. Performance artist Helga Davis is a visiting curator who directed this short film, in which the last of McKellar's direct descendants literally comes face to face with his legacy. The posing of my great uncle for these sketches was. Really, a、uh, means of survival for him. He had many jobs, but the modeling feels like his work, his life's work. Sargent was paid forty thousand dollars for the murals, a tremendous sum in 1916. McKellar, as this letter reveals, was cash-strapped, and for his modeling, made just a few dollars a day. He had this life. That、uh, that put him in a uniform, that put him in a box, that perhaps people would see him and they identified him as one thing, and we are never only one thing, and he certainly was not one thing. McKellar was also the model for Sargent's murals at Harvard University, and for the body of one-time Harvard president Abbott Lawrence Lowell, who had expelled black students from freshman dorms. 
He also stood for this statue of Massasoit in Plymouth. But with the exception of census and military records, Thomas McKellar has been erased from this story. How could we possibly forget somebody who was so pivotal, who played so pivotal a role in the production of Boston's public art? That's a question that revolves around blind spots in the discipline of art history, of history, and of society in general. The gardener is confronting history here, calling out the erasure of a black man by a white artist a century ago, and what that looks like today, when there is finally a reclamation. What do you see when you look up at those murals at the Museum of Fine Arts? I see yes, and yes. You, you made Apollo, you made, you made these things, and here's the body that inspired it. Here's the body that really made it.